you better be home soon. Well, that was the Lions coach, Chris <laughs> Fagan, sending a message to his players after they've been called back. And, of course, it's uh, on the agenda now as well when we get into our footy forum here tonight. Player resilience and do they need to play? How do they play? We've got a couple of different perspectives. Chris Fagan's been kind enough to join us, the Lions coach. Welcome, Fags, And also Tom Petroro, a prominent player agent from TLA. Uh, good voice, first of all, Chris, and we welcome you in. You mentioned on the weekend that you had a conversation with Neil Danaher that gave you a little bit of different perspective. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, it wasn't so much a conversation. He, he just sent me a text, I think it might have been last Wednesday, just to see how it was going. And at that point in time, you know, we the, all the talk about the hubs was going on. And probably my view, even at that stage, was uh, I don't like the idea of hubs. And, you know, then I heard from him and I thought about what he's been through. And then I, then I started to think about what the medical people have been through and what the people went through in bushfires. And I thought, well... In a sense, you know, all of us have uh, been beneficiaries of the game and probably the least we can do at this point in time is um, if we have to go into hubs to play the game, then that's what we should do to, to get the season up and going and, and help the industry out. If a, one of your players came to you and said, I don't feel comfortable and I don't want to play, uh, how would you attack that, Fags? Would you understand? And given that you live, you're in a place where you've got so many players who aren't from Brisbane albeit that the dynamic's changing, would you, would you have empathy and would you support them or how would you attack it? Oh, yeah, no, 100% I'd have empathy. I mean, I've discussed this issue with our leadership group and our emerging leaders and, you know, all the way through, the message has been if somebody felt strongly enough that they wouldn't want to put themselves into that situation because they had a young child at home or a wife that was expecting, then uh, we would completely understand that and respect their wishes. Do you think they should be paid in that instance? Um, oh, gee, that's a, I heard you talking about that before. It's not something I've really given a great deal of thought to, so I probably don't, I don't want to stick my neck out tonight. I'd like to think about that one a little bit more, I think. Stick your neck out, Tom. What do you reckon? Should players who don't play, if that was that situation, get paid? Well, I think if, uh, based on the, the agreement that the Players Association and the AFL reached, that if there was going to be no football, they were still going to get 30% of their income. So I think everything's negotiable. Um, obviously, we want the boys to play, but in that instance, you'd probably have to work through it. Tom, Tom we've already heard from Travis Boak, one of your higher-profile clients today. Do you think that the players were in shock when they had that first worst-case scenario presented last week? And was it regrettable what they went through, or did they come out of it looking bad? I think Tuesday, Tuesday night was a shock, mainly because it wasn't the norm and it wasn't something they expected. I think as um, as the days went on, we heard from a number of players. Uh, uh, we heard Joel Selwood last night on Nine News say that boys have got to roll their sleeves up. I think that initially the feeling was probably some shock, but I think once they processed it, I think it's like any decision that creates emotion. Your initial reaction is not necessarily the right reaction. And like Chris had said earlier... It took some time to process it. And once they processed it, the boys were ready to play and roll their sleeves up and, and get into it. Chris, you've become an influential voice in the game. You're on several committees at the moment, or two big ones with the AFL. Yourself and Nathan Buckley working on a return-to-play model. We've talked tonight about the West Australian footballers. If, in fact, they do have that disadvantage, or even if they don't, should they be allowed to start training now in groups of 10? Yeah, it's an interesting question. Um, I think if they are able to do that for too long a period ahead of all the other teams, I think then it becomes too much of an advantage. But if it's only a, a week or so, I have no problem with that. Will you be telling the AFL that as part of your the committee you're sitting on with Nathan? Um, we've already had a little bit of a discussion uh, around that idea. Uh, Matthew Lloyd, I think it was, said last week that he felt there were too many coaches on that committee. I know Greg Swan's on the committee as well. That's another committee that Chris is on, yeah, in fact. Yeah, it's the second committee, and that he didn't feel recruiting was well enough represented given the draft age is one of your considerations. Where, where do you sit on that? Do you think a coach or the coaches are the right people to be judging on the age of the uh, participants in the draft? Oh, we've actually added a general manager of football and a, and a recruiting manager to our to our committee so we can have a bit more of a, a balanced view. So uh, um, I think that's been a good initiative. 
Tom, there's no doubt that there are going to be some changes to player payments over the next few years. It might be shorter lists, probably almost certainly shorter lists. Should the top players continue to get the big bucks and the, and the cut come from the bottom? Oh, I, I think that um, I think it's hard to speculate as to how these cuts are going to roll out. If the cuts are to do with list sizes and it's um, commensurate with the numbers, then then it probably doesn't change. Um, I think with anything, um, the best players will continue to get paid well. Uh, I don't think that the squeeze needs to come from the bottom, and hopefully it's you know across the board as opposed to um, top top or bottom in terms of the cuts. Your agency looks after half the players in the competition approximately. Caro told us that she felt the salary cap would come back and that the, the collective bargaining agreement might get redone approximately one and a half to two million, in, in her opinion. What's, what's your view on that? Are you hearing that? And would, do you think the players would support that or would you dig in? Oh, we'd love to have half the competition, but it's probably more like a third, Hutchie. But I think you're the one with half the media landscape. But the... Um, look... I think it's really hard to speculate. We're working, I guess, all on the go and, and waiting to see when games are coming back. Once we know when games are coming back, then we might be able to review list sizes. I think that um, I think there's going to be an adjustment, whether that is the salary cap next year and, and whether that's players taking pay cuts or whether that's just numbers coming back and, and the numbers being, um, I guess, averaged out over the, the contract terms. But... Um, Ideally, as an agent, you don't really want players taking pay cuts, but we'll do what we have to do to make the game, um, I guess, roll on. And and and, the, and society and the and and the public and the, and the members need the game back. So, so the players are prepared to do what they need to do. And it's a quick one to finish with. It might be a silly question: Are all deals off, or are there any players actually being any clubs on offense trying to find a better deal or create some security or pinch a free agent in the gap? What's the mood of the clubland? Is that at me, Hachi? Yeah, it's you, Tom. Yeah, um, the um, I think that I think it's hard for clubs to be on the front foot at present, not knowing what their landscape is going to be, re list sizes and salary caps. Uh, I'd be lying if I didn't say that um, amongst our 260 players at TLA that we've had inquiries from opposition clubs. I got a phone call last week about one of our guys. Uh, I don't think that we're progressing. Uh, discussions like I would have been this time last year with a Steve Canelio. I think it's it's probably people sounding each other out, and I, and I envisage that ramping up probably in a month in a month's time. Well, whatever happens, the players will need to be resilient regardless. A couple of great perspectives from two good footy people. Thanks, Chris Fagan. Good luck. Keep singing. <laughs> thanks, Archie. You stitched me up. <laughs> and thanks to Tom Petroro for joining us from TLA. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Archie. Thanks, Cara. And